Um, we came up with a karaoke badge uh, <laughs> l- last summer. And um, a similar thing. People organized meetups. They, they got people together uh, with the intention of going together to all these different karaoke places, to three different karaoke places, just to unlock this karaoke badge. So in the same room, like, they set up a call in Minneapolis, of all places, to go out and get this badge. Uh, and they you know, created a Facebook event, and they uh, put it up over Twitter, and I believe they got like 30 or 40 people out, which was like early last time. So we decided to also come up with uh, a, a wider variety of badges, a badge that you get for going to five different art museums, a badge, a pizzaiola badge that you get for going to 10 different pizza places. Again, we live in New York City, this is supposed to be the pizza capital of the world to some degree, but how many times, uh, h- how many of you have been to more than three pizza places in the last, uh, let's say, six months? Yeah. The idea here is to go to 10 different ones, to cross it up, to really prove that you know a lot about New York City pizza. Uh, we have one for taco trucks today, for going to hit all the food trucks. I was reading this uh, article in New York Magazine the other day about uh, the top, their top 25 favorite food trucks in the city, and I looked at the list and I was like, I really love food, but I only hit three out of the 25, right? Not even close. Um, so we noticed that people are uh, you know, getting together, throwing meetups, the idea, the intention is to go out to get the badges, but what they're actually doing in, in playing the game is they're meeting each other. So we decided to come up with a, a badge called the Swarm Badge. If you get 50 people into a room, then this badge automatically unlocks for everybody in the room. So not just the person that's checking in, but everyone retroactively gets it. There's like a little light up that comes up. Um, and what happened after we introduced this badge? People started to throw big <laughs> swarm parties <laughs> just to get this badge. So here's one in uh, South Carolina. And then this one was actually thrown by this restaurant called AJ Bomber, Bombers. They threw a, a flash mob party, they had photographers and all these other people, and I believe they got like 80 or 90 people out for this party. Again, in, in playing the game, they're actually meeting each other, and like, all, these social, all these great social things, and you know, getting to know one another. So it's kind of good. Um, as Susan mentioned, there's this concept in Foursquare, there's a fourth element to this game, uh, called the mayor. And um, the mayor is basically uh, an idea we came up with. We're like, you know, it should, it should be really, it would be really exciting to kind of um, call out the person that comes to a place the most often. You know, the, the guy, that guy that knows what drink to get at the bar, like what seat to sit at, or uh, what dessert to get at a certain place. Um, and he's the regular that comes in. So we came up with this, with this concept called the mayor. The mayor is the person that goes to a place the most often in the last two months. So it's a rolling window, so it never gets stale. Um, and we noticed that after we introduced this, I mean, this has been there since the launch, but people really took to this. and they. They have little mini competitions between each other. They have competitions to take over mayorships of offices, to make up, take over mayorships of local coffee shops, um, and, and commutes, and all these other things. Um, here's a quote from the New York Times. Ms. Seckenberger says she once left out of bed to reclaim the title of mayor. <laughs> she didn't want someone else to take over. Um, here's one from a student. This is actually uh, came out maybe two months ago or so. He says, finger squats that are loose ones. It's actually a comment on some other blog post that he has. And he says, I don't know what I'd do with myself if I lost the mayorship of my university. It's the only reason I can <laughs> thought that was kind of a great, funny story. Um, here's one that, was, that we saw maybe at the beginning of this week. Uh, there's a reserved parking spot at this uh, at the supermarket. Uh, <laughs> uh, but if you're mayor, you get that spot. <laughs> Um, so there are a lot of patterns. We've been around for 17 months, as I said. Um, we now have more than 2 million users. We have more than 100 million check-ins. To the point now, we, it doesn't all fit into a, into a single computer. We had to get we had to like update our servers and do all this, uh, do all, do all this stuff earlier this week. Um, so we have a lot of great patterns that we can look into. And we started teasing out this data not to yourself, but not only to yourself, but for everyone else um, as well. So if you go to your own profile, if you go to the website, you can see stats about where, you, where you've been, where you've hung out. Uh, and it gives you kind of like a dashboard of um, your entire history of going out uh, anywhere in the world, right? Any, anytime you check in anywhere in the world. This actually says, this is an interesting stat for me, it says 30% of new check-ins, or 30% of all of my check-ins are in new places. And if you're the kind of, t- if you're the kind of person that wants to uh, go out and discover more, you probably want to keep that number higher rather than lower, right? So we, in exposing these, we actually want you to set maybe different metrics for yourself and like give, a, give an overview of how well you're doing. Um, it shows you who, who you hung out with, uh, who your friends are that you see most often, for instance, all those are my coworkers. Um, it shows you all the cities that you've ever been in, kind of like a beautiful visualization of your, of your life. 
um, if you go to your history page, because it tracks every single place you, you've been in, and because it knows who your friends are, it can actually map together and show you who you were there at, at a particular place with. So you can actually, one day in the future, you'd be able to go back three or four years and you'd say, ah, oh, who did I have coffee with that day? Oh, oh yeah, I understand. Um, so not only do we release that data to yourself, to a, a single profile, we actually show this off in some sort of public way to everybody else as well. So there's this feature in Foursquare called um, Trending Places, or Trending Now. Um, and it highlights a few places in the app where uh, there's a lot of activity, there's a lot of action, a lot of people are checking in. And this is a great way to kind of get a zeitgeist of like, what's going on. So if you were to take out your phone right now, and it's around lunchtime, uh, I'm sure uh, maybe the cafeteria here is going to be trending, or maybe uh, a couple of places in Midtown uh, uh, will be trending. So you can kind of get an idea of like, where, where is everyone? Like, what's the most popular thing going on? On Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights in New York, you often see like the movie theaters and um, the uh, music venues are all coming. Um, interesting story from last December. I think it was, we had this really big snowstorm. I don't know, maybe like the 26th or 27th of December. And the night before, we're all, we're all working late in the office. We all go out. And we were giving a demo. And I remember looking at the app, and all the Whole Foods in, in downtown Manhattan we were trying to, we were, we were facing these village. So the Whole Foods on House and Street and 14th Street and, uh, and, and somewhere, somewhere else in that area. We're like, what could be going on? Why are they all trending on a Friday night? Because on a Friday night, it's usually, uh, you know, Webster Hall, and, you know, all the, all the fun places. And we realized the snowstorm is coming the next day, so people are clearly stocking up uh, because they can't go out the next morning. Um, so in all this data, we notice that people are checking into anything and everything that they can think of. They check into work, obviously, probably to gauge whether they come to work on time. I mean, I imagine there'll be useful stuff later on. Um, they check into yoga studios, because there's no other way to keep track of whether, like, how many times you went. At least if you go to the gym, you know exactly, because you swipe a card. Um, they, they track all their commutes. Uh, I personally don't do this, but there are a lot of people that, you know, because you hit multiple train stations, and uh, uh, have a, might have a long commute. It's an interesting thing to track where all, you know, all the airports you go to. This is actually a screenshot of, uh, of an internal dashboard, like a live view of Shibuya Station in Tokyo, which is probably one of the biggest uh, train slash uh, bus stations in the world. And there's constantly people checked in. You can actually see like there are like 300 people checked in like, all the time. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear, by the way? Just want to work it's good? Okay. Um, I can't actually hear if this is working, so you have to tell uh, Shibuya Station is so popular there, there's a dog statue in front of Shibuya Station called Chico. And Chico is a real dog that, was, that would come to the station every day for like 60 or 70 years waiting for his master. And one day his master didn't come back, so he just stood there forever. And this is how the legend goes. Um, and so there's a statue. And I noticed that even the statue got up, uh, got check ins. And it's because <laughs> the statue is a great place to come meet, right? Because Shibuya is like this really crowded, um, many, many uh, square feet all around inside and outside, and this is a great place to say, you know, meet you at the statue. Um, we noticed that people checked into the earthquake recently. This is probably what in April or May. Um, and interesting enough, I mean, you can do this kind of stuff on Twitter, but it, it, it's interesting because it's um, it, it's obviously location related, and you're all together. Maybe there's there's something there, right? You're all together, and you uh, who knows? Maybe in the future something something more interesting can come out of it. We'll meet up. Um, Another thing that I noticed shortly after the earthquake, actually, so the G20 summit was in Toronto, and people started checking into this little um, uh, park where they cordoned off, you know, all the protesters were supposed to stand, stand around. Um, so I was like, that's kind of interesting. So I clicked into it and was checking it out, and all of a sudden I noticed that people are checking into the detention center. We're obviously been pulled out. Of this <laughs> but the most important thing that I saw <laughs> was that the detention center has a mayor as well. <laughs> Uh, and, it's, and it's great to see because every every uh, every entry in the database can be added by users, and if you're a super user, you can actually go back and edit it and kind of like um, Wikipedia style help each other kind of make this data set really good. You can actually see some of the tags that you put in here. You know, the, you know, G20 summit, ADC jail, prison, so, and then you see uh, categories like ski or as well. And I love that someone left a tip and it says, try to avoid going here, not the best. Decline to the wrong